For more than a hundred years, Puget Sound Energy and its predecessors have provided the Northwest with electricity fueled by the cascading waters of Snoqualmie Falls. Looking to the future, PSC embarked on an enormous redevelopment project that would not only preserve a natural wonder, but would continue and enhance the engineering legacy of the falls. For Puget Sound Energy, this is a project of a lifetime. This is one of the most unique generating projects in the country, and continuing that legacy was extremely important. You take advantage of the resources, but you have to make sure that you, that you protect them. It's not a hard choice to make. The story of Snoqualmie Falls Power does not begin as a regional utility, but rather as the dream of one man. In 1898, Charles Baker set out to accomplish what no one had ever tried, a hydroelectric plant built entirely underground. In the short span of 16 months, his crews blasted downward through 260 feet of solid rock, carved out a massive cavern, installed four enormous turbines, and strong power lines to Seattle and Tacoma. In July of 1899, the plant was generating 5,300 kilowatts of power. Over the span of nearly 60 years, new and improved turbines and the addition of a second plant increased the electrical output by a factor of nearly nine. What's interesting is that each new unit that was added basically doubled the output of the power plant at that time. Since 1957, plant one and two have had the ability to generate 44,000 kilowatts, enough to provide electricity to 33,000 households. We had a 110 plus year old facility. A lot of the dials and the things you see here were actually still in the plant and were still operating. Puget Sound Energy operates the Snoqualmie Falls hydroelectric facilities under a licensing agreement with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. The first license spanned from 1956 to 1993. As that license neared its expiration, PSE began a comprehensive endeavor to assess every economic and environmental issue and its quest to relicense the Snoqualmie facility. Relicensing a hydro project is not something that is done overnight. It's done over decades. The biggest driver was to build a facility that would last another 100 years. This was an opportunity to rebuild and improve the project to the degree that hasn't happened since the project was constructed. Paramount to the relicensing decision was the long-term benefits to PSC's customers versus the total cost of the redevelopment, all the while taking into consideration the concerns of the local community, the environmental impact of the construction, as well as the effect it would have on the million plus annual visitors to the falls. When you're talking about developing a resource that is not only beautiful and majestic, it's dealing with history and communities, and you're talking about a habitat, there's a lot of things that come into play and a lot of, a lot of people's interests need to be taken into account. In 2004, PSE was granted a new 40-year license. Five years later, construction began at the Plant One site. We took plant one offline, and then we also started removal of the buildings. With the buildings gone, the dam which diverts water into the intakes could now be removed. The construction schedule was an exercise in logistics. An agreement with the Department of Fish and Wildlife only allowed construction that required heavy machinery in the Snoqualmie River to occur from June to October to minimize the impact on the fish habitat. It was absolutely critical that we got these two steel coffer dams in during that fish window. If we did not complete either of these coffer dams, we would at a minimum have lost a year of our schedule. Those were not a minor endeavor. Uh, they were big, they were long, they had to withstand what could be a hundred year flood. And we all kind of chuckled a little when we were building them, but that first winter, we had two 50 year flood events. And nobody was chuckling after those because we were all like, I'm glad we had this in front of us to protect us from the river. With the coffer dams in place, plant two was taken offline and the original powerhouse was torn down. At plant one, 
crews began to extract the original Unit 5 turbine that had been installed in the cavern in 1905. When you're in the cavern, everything looks like it belongs there. One of the cool things was when they started bringing the pieces of Unit 5 out, and you set them on the ground and you walk over and you stand next to them, you're, you're just like, wow, this, this is huge. I, how did they get this stuff down in there? One of the tasks that we had to do on this project was to enlarge the shaft and enlarge the cavern to accommodate this new equipment. And it still just blows me away that they were able to do this in 1898. And here we had a crane, we had electronic blasting, we had everything contained. And we were able to do this without any safety incidents, but they were too. And that's just, it, that just still amazes me. Over the course of the next three years, the new Unit 5 turbine was installed. The other four original turbines were refurbished and new wider penstocks were added. At Plant 2, a new penstock was built, a new powerhouse was constructed, and a new, more efficient generator was installed. Crews then turned to modernizing the plant's control systems, part of which hadn't changed since the plant was built. We've upgraded all of the electrical into the modern era and with as much safety built in as we possibly could. So, I mean, you went from manual operated everything to a computer screen where guys are literally touching a computer screen and doing the same thing that we used to do by hand. A new facility controller was installed that monitored the river 24-7, allowing the plants to take better advantage of the natural water flow. The control system will allow us to maximize our output while maintaining the flows that we're required to keep over the falls for the fish. When we have a heavy flow into the river, we're not going to have to run down there manually, open up valves, and try and adjust the, the flows to remain in compliance. The computer will take care of all of that for us. One of the things that we're most pleased with is we've been able to make efficiency gains that's brought the capacity of the project from 44 megawatts up to 54 megawatts, and we're not using any more water. We're just being more efficient with the, the, the resources, the precious resources that we've been given. While efficiency was a key goal, the redevelopment also allowed PSE to address a number of the community's concerns about the plant's operation. One of the most serious issues for the citizens of Snoqualmie for many years has been flooding. One of the worst flood-prone cities in the country. When this plant was originally built over 100 years ago, the engineers didn't have a technology at that time to know that they were creating a pinch point in the river that actually aggravated flooding for this newly planted town. We discovered that we could actually lower the diversion dam and provide approximately six inches of flood relief for the city of Snoqualmie. Which is the difference between a flood and no flood in many of the neighborhoods in downtown. The other issue that was very important to us was all these old dilapidated buildings across the falls. And so working with PSC, we also expressed that we really wanted to see a lessening of the number of facilities and really to have all the structures blend into the natural background as much as possible. Although these buildings provided a connection to the plant's history, the issue of safety and expense were just too difficult to overcome. When you have a 112-year-old masonry building that's falling apart, it's a challenge to try to figure out how to restore something like that. And so some of those buildings had to be taken down. The original carpenter shop, however, was spared. PSC lifted and moved the building from its original foundation, restored it, and turned it into a museum. Some of the cool stuff we were able to do because of the redevelopment is actually bring up these huge pieces of equipment that weren't going to serve a purpose down there anymore and use them in interpretive and educational ways for people to see them and appreciate them. The biggest visible improvements were made to the visitor areas that surround the park. Improved landscaping, accessibility, and amenities were all part of the redevelopment. In June of 2013, after decades of planning and over three and a half years of construction, the redevelopment of the Snoqualmie Falls hydroelectric facility was completed. We will probably never do a project as complex and have the impact on the surrounding community that we've had. Whether it's mitigating flooding, investing in a crown jewel of a park, it's just a win-win for everybody. And really what it comes down to is your customers want you to be safe, dependable, and efficient. This is conscience-free, clean energy that is uh, very much what we, we need to invest in these days. I think Charles Baker would be impressed with the fact that the project is still generating electricity. He never saw his plant as a place that stayed static. It wasn't a historic relic to him. 
even though it's extremely important historically to us. It's really great to see something that you spend so much time on actually get finished in the end. When you talk to people after you're retired, they're gonna say, well, what did you do in your life? And you can say, well, I got to work on Snoqualmie Falls. This project is one of those that, by golly, we did it. Snoqualmie Falls is nature's gift to mankind. It's a source of great pride for all those who have sought to protect this national treasure and for all those who have endeavored to use its gift wisely.